Okay, well, welcome to Common Sense Graphite session on best middle and high school science games for NGSS. I'm gonna go over several top tools today that you can find on www.graphite.org and more tools that can address NGSS as well. The three tools that we're specifically gonna go over are Possible Worlds, the Radix Endeavor, and SimCity EDU, the Pollution Challenge. So let's get started. The first tool I want to talk about is Possible Worlds. It has entertaining and well-researched games that help correct scientific misconceptions. It's best for grades 4 through 12. It's free and it's across all platforms. So today I'm going to share on each tool, I'm going to share three use cases. The first use case for Possible Worlds is to introduce vocabulary. That's something that we have to do to provide students with a foundation to learn. And so with the module on photosynthesis, students are introduced to many lessons and they're asked to go through and find passwords. These passwords are really key vocabulary words. So as a teacher in fifth grade and we're talking about photosynthesis, I might be able to assign at the hook of my lesson students to go on, initiate gameplay and find three new passwords. After they've found those three new passwords, it then becomes a platform for me to transition seamlessly to my direct instruction, whatever that looks like, because we know now students have some of that background knowledge. They have some vocabulary terms that they can work with and better facilitate a conversation on the content. The next use case is to use another mini game to transform students into active chemical change agents. This can happen in a, in a shared instruction or guided practice activity portion of your lesson on photosynthesis. And so through this game, students are introduced to this robot called Biobot Bob. And in order to succeed through the gameplay, they have to produce key things for Biobot Bob, fuel, food, and self-defense. So it's, um, it's tear gas for self-defense, it's uh, methanol for fuel, and it's glucose for food. And that enables them to have success through the missions. And one of the things that students do is they have a mini game where they zap with light molecules. And those molecules split apart, and then they get to form new molecules. And they understand how that process works to form new substances. This is really good, especially when you're trying to incorporate some real world scenarios in students can imagine now how photosynthesis plays a part in a leaf in real life. And so this is a way to use that game-based interactive to understand a real-world concept. The, the third uh, use case scenario is to encourage higher order thinking skills and deep, take a deeper dive into photosynthesis. One of the great things with Possible Worlds, it comes with a supplementary suite of materials and resources. They give you a slide deck that you can deliver a presentation and after gameplay of a few missions, you can deliver a, a slide deck that really takes them a little bit deeper. Here's one slide shot where it talks about here's this train that really can be moved along through consuming strictly sugar cubes. And you ask your students, you know, maybe you give a thumbs up, thumbs down, can this really happen? Thinking about their learning on photosynthesis, so you give them these kind of activities, encourage some higher order thinking skills, and at the end they have these activities where like the huge discovery piece is all about redwood and redwood trees. And so they're given these, these sheets where they can really take a deeper dive into exploring how photosynthesis is related to redwood trees, if they're prone to disease or bugs or how tall they can actually grow and how photosynthesis plays a part in that. So that's possible worlds and three use case scenarios for that tool. The next tool is the Radix Endeavor. This is an online fantasy world multiplayer game. It's best for older grades, secondary, high school, eight through 12. It's free and it's across all platforms too. One of the easiest ways to introduce the Radix uh, Endeavor in a classroom is to use it as a motivation for students and offer it as a finished early activity. Lots of times we want students to be on topic and get lessons done and what better of a way to offer game-based learning as 
their finished learning activity. And the nice thing is, is through the teacher dashboard of this tool, you can assign certain missions and they can be on certain topics. And so some of these missions that, that you can see, uh, they have some really neat names that attract students. One of them is Pooping for Science, where students have to go take samples of animal feces and figure out how that can be used to bake a cake. And, and they learn lots of these concepts and, and there's narratives all throughout that. There's lots of little activities that, that teachers could assign and this could be a, hey, I want you to do this specific mission for your finished early activity that coincides with what we talked about earlier today. Next is to use this as a formative assessment tool for a genetics lesson. There's lots of little mini games with different science concepts in the Radix Endeavor. This is an example of one on genetics. So you can assign a mission again where students really explore plant science and plant genetics. In this example, there's, there's these two brother farmers and they're growing what looks like corn for, for us in the real world and they're talking about genetics and dominant genes and recessive genes and how that how there's a variance sometimes when you plant crops with dominant and recessive genes. And so throughout this, there's nice narratives that really confirm understanding for students. And they further have little activities that you can, okay, two capital H's, a capital H, and a, you know, so a dominant and a recessive, two recessive genes. And they go through this process of really exploring what happens if you plant seeds of those types and what you can expect. The cool thing is teachers can monitor all this too as a formative assessment piece and identify what, where students are at and if they grasp that understanding of that concept. And again, this is just genetics. So these are lots of little screenshots where students are actually having virtual conversations and learning about that concept. The last uh, use case for the Radix Endeavor is to use it as a blended learning tool for the human body system. This is another side little mini unit with inside this game. So one of the pieces is you can assign a mission where students have to talk to Dr. Japanda. And in Dr. Japanda, you're in a clinic. And this clinic has all these sick patients. And so what you're doing is exploring four major body systems. Your circulatory, respiratory, digestive, and nervous system, right? and they're having conversations with these patients, diagnosing unhealthy and healthy body parts, and then they're providing treatment for that. Now, if we want a blended learning approach, we learn through the game, and then what better way to have online effective technology use and then bring it offline where we can assign in small groups students a respective body system. So that if I have a group of five kids, I assign them digestive and from their learning through the game, now they have to get real world examples and do the same thing and then present back to their peers and the classmates. And we all know when students teach others, they retain 90% of the content. And so this is a great model to use this tool for a blended learning approach where they play the game and then they take that concept and use real world inferences and deliver that material back to their students. The last and third tool I'm going to talk about is SimCity EDU, the Pollution Challenge. So a lot of us probably have heard of SimCity, the classic building game, but this one's tuned specifically to STEM teacher needs. It's for middle school, grades five through eight. It is paid, and so there's a variance of what those bundle rates or the rates of the games are, and so I would recommend that you go to Glass Lab that produces the game, that develops the game, and look at those rates. But this is also available on cross-platform. It's just you have to have some money for this tool. So the first, uh, they have a really robust teacher dashboard that enables teachers to track students and identify students that are having trouble. That's a big thing. We need more descriptive feedback and to help students when they're having struggles. And so you can monitor game progress. You can monitor competency levels during a certain mission complex problem solving, and then you can even go student by student and identify which specific part of the lesson they're having trouble with. So as a game-based learning tool, 
this is an easy way to use it as formative assessment for a certain NGSS standard on environmental relationships and causal relationships. The next use case scenario for SimCity EDU is just to introduce game-based learning to students. Sometimes in science classes, it might be a challenge to introduce game-based learning to students. So it's nice to have a platform to do that. SimCity EDU isn't like the other, the other SimCity games where it's kind of it never ends. This has four specific modules, four specific lesson plans, so it can be a short period of time where you educators in the science classrooms can introduce a concept through game-based learning. They have missions that relate to school and how school can be impacted by different environmental systems relationships. And then they can talk about pollution problems and maybe how that can impact school attendance. So you get a little bit of a deeper thinking level with causal relationships and, and ecosystems and how those work together. Each, uh, each module has a student facing video and sometimes for the students but also the teachers that are yet to embrace game-based learning, it helps you adopt it much easier and it's easier to understand. So there's a video for each one and then this is their gameplay where they can actually figure out if there's a coal plant, you know, independent versus dependent variables, air pollution and factories and plants, they can understand that complex thinking and realize that sometimes there's a give and take in ecosystems when you're, when you're trying to build and create and those types of things. Last, you can use, there's, there's a really great, on each lesson plan for SimCity, they have a, kind of a, a closing activity that is perfect for shared instruction in your, in your lesson plans and specifically textual analysis. They have a closing and quick write prompts for each of the four modules. And so when we think about shared instruction, we know that effective technology use can really make the difference sometime for kids. And so pairing SimCity EDU and these closing activity writing prompts with a source like a blog, kid blog, or something else, we could have a really nice platform for students to exhibit textual analysis on these concepts. Furthermore, if you use some tools that have better functionality, they can have students actually poll, they can have students vote on the best student responses, their textual analysis responses, and then that can help drive a deeper level discussion in class for your students. So with that said, those are three tools that can help address NGSS standards in your science classrooms at the middle to secondary levels. And these tools are found on Common Sense Graphite. Graphite is, an, is a platform that really helps teachers do a couple things really well. One is discover tools. So any other science tools you need, you can go there. The second is it helps you evaluate those tools. You think about engagement, are these tools engaging? You think about pedagogy, is there actual learning going on? And then you think about support. What if I have a high gifted and talented learner in the front row and I've got a special edge student right next to that person? Is this tool going to meet the demands of both those learners? And obviously is there support from the developer? So that's what we look at. And you can also have a platform to help you design these tech rich lessons like these use cases within Graphite so that you know if you implement the Radix Endeavor if you implement Possible Worlds or SimCity, you know exactly what you're getting and where that fits best in your lesson plan. Thank you.